Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Anarchast, your home for anarchy on the internet. We're coming in right on the beach here in Narcapoco, actually with, uh, have you been on Anarchast once or twice? Twice, I think, right? I think once. Oh, just once? once yeah. oh, okay, well now it's twice. Nathan Freeman, he uh, runs the Anarchapoco conference. He's moved down here to Acapulco over a year ago. Uh, and he's actually just moved into a new place. We're actually in his place right now. He moved in, down onto the beach here, just in the Diamante area of Acapulco. That's as much information as I'm gonna give you, just in case the <laughs> CIA or NSA is watching. Uh, and uh, we just announced uh, launching in Acapulco, so we're gonna talk about that. I also wanna talk to you about what's going on in Acapulco. There's a lot of, in Mexico in general, there's so much misperceptions about what, how dangerous it is here and things like that. Let's get into that and lifestyle and, and even what other things like what's going on even with uh, Hillary Clinton and all that. So we're gonna get into all that. So uh, Nathan, good to see you again. Great to see you, man. Yeah. So uh, let's talk about Narcopoco first. Sure. Um, I'm so excited about this year. Um, we, we just launched our advanced ticket sales. Uh, things are already starting to brew. Uh, it's a great, uh, we've got, um, we've actually got a new sales process this year, uh, which is going to be uh, a lot better, we hope. Um, Bitcoin sales are going to be a lot simpler for us to, to handle this year than they were last year, so that's a great thing. We actually had uh, L. Dixon, who was a rapper at last year's in Arcapulco. He's been setting that up for us. Uh, so we got off Eventbrite, it looks like, which is good, yep. and uh, have direct uh, Bitcoin uh, sales, which is great. So he's been doing a great job. And we're moving to Stripe for uh, credit card sales uh, early next week. Uh, so if you want to pay by credit card uh, by next week, that's all going to happen with no involvement of PayPal, which I'm really excited about because, you know, CIA PAL is just not where I really want to process this stuff. Do we even want to mention what happened last year? Uh, we can mention that, sure. If you want to make this an anti-PayPal podcast, <laughs> we can go for, I don't know how much time you got. Uh, I just know with me, they've shut down my account. I've got two shut down right now. I've got five. I don't know if they're allowed to have five, but I have five. And... Uh, two are shut down. Again, they want more paperwork. What are you doing? And then last year, as you know, so we're getting uh, near the conference uh, and all the registrations are coming in the last few months, which is what usually happens. So quite a bit of money. And we need to pay a lot of that money to a lot of the speakers and their travel and their airplane tickets and the hotel and everything. And PayPal froze it all. And they said, we well, just want to make sure you're doing the conference. And it's like, <laughs> okay, well, uh, yeah, we're going to do it. You can see we're doing it. And we got the contracts and everything. It's all set up. And they're like, no, we're going to see, even hold the money afterwards for like a month just to make sure that everyone was happy with it. <laughs> it's like, okay. And it was way longer than a month. It actually took me so long to get that money unfrozen. And here's the thing with PayPal, and anyone who's dealt with PayPal in a business fashion knows this. So they're holding like $70,000 of our money. And uh, I said, well, we kind of needed that money. That's sort of, you know, of what we, we need that money to do the conference. <laughs> they're like, we just want to make sure you're doing the conference. So I'm like, but we need the money to do the conference. If you don't give us the money, we're not doing the conference. <laughs> that's what it came down to. And that's where PayPal kicked in. And I, I've learned this. And they go, well, we can give you a loan for $70,000 at only 6.9%. Uh, and it actually turns out, and I just found this out, PayPal, people who work there, they actually get a commission. So if they can get an account shut down and can find a reason why you shouldn't have that account, like you did the paperwork wrong or something, the people who find it actually get a percentage of the money that PayPal gets to keep from that. That is unbelievable. It's absolutely unbelievable. Uh, Capley Peter Thiel was in any way uh, associated with this thing. Or, uh, I don't know. He goes to Bilderberg now, so I don't know if he's... Uh, I don't know what to I, think of that guy. I, you know, I don't, I don't want to pick on him in particular, but that, as a business practice, that's disturbing. And it's, so, it's such a relief now that we have alternatives. You know, when PayPal was the only game in town, that was the only option. But the fact that we can more readily accept Bitcoin this year, um, we actually may even set up other uh, alternative cryptocurrencies. Like we, we, we have the option to set up Litecoin and Dash and I think even Dogecoin. Um, <laughs> That'd be pretty cool paying for an Arcapoco with Dogecoin. <laughs> it sure would. Um, probably be a lot of coin though. <laughs> I don't even know what to do with it, I guess. Exchange it for Bitcoin. You go to Shapeshift and switch it back to Bitcoin. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's really great. We've got this, this new setup and it's very exciting. We're, we're still in the early days, so there's probably going to be a hiccup or two. Um, but well, the, the website's not even really up yet, right? Right. So we, 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 haven't, we haven't done our, our revamp of the website. Uh, that's still underway. Uh, that'll probably be in the next few weeks. Uh, and we're, we're going to be making some, some pretty good changes there. Have a lot more information about how to get here, about what the, about what the venue's all about, about what to expect out of the context. 
One of the biggest questions I got last year uh, was people would say, well, when I buy a ticket to an Arcapulco, what am I buying? And I, it was kind of a weird question to me until I realized there wasn't anything anywhere that actually said, you're going to sit in a room for three days and get presentations and lectures from the best minds in liberty. Right? That, there was no place that actually said that. So people didn't know that's what they were buying with the conference. But that's what you're buying. And in this year, it's four days, not three days, it's four days. So 33% more value. Um, and we're actually going to uh, let it expand and breathe a little bit more this year. So last year was very, very dense. We, we started at 10 a.m. <laughs> yeah, we started at 10 a.m. We went to 7 p.m. And it was, you know, bam, 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 bam. You got an hour for lunch and you had to cram everything in. People could barely get down the elevators and back in an hour. Um, we had a bathroom break every two and a half hours or something. It was, it was crazy. It was like a boot camp for anarchists. Yeah, it was a boot camp. <laughs> Slave camp for anarchists. Wait a minute, that doesn't quite work out. They were like, "This is awesome, but come on, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got to pee." I don't know if we get the air conditioning lower next year too. That was a big complaint. I don't know if you heard that one. Well, it was. What was weird was the the complaint was in in the other rooms the air conditioning was too cold, right? But in the main room, in the mornings it was too cold, but in the afternoons it wasn't cold enough. Uh, try to regulate that temperature. Yeah. So so I think uh, in the coming year we're gonna. We're going to try to balance that out more during the day, try to shift it over the course of the day so we're, we're keeping things cooler uh, earlier. Bring a sweater if you're coming, just in case. You know, some people did get a little chilly in the dress room. And, dress in layers. Yeah. Dress in layers. That's what I, I would say. Yeah. Um, but we're going we're gonna to expand it out to let some more breathing room happen so there'll be longer breaks between the sessions. There'll be more frequent bathroom breaks. There'll be a much longer lunch uh, so that people can get out and get some food and get back. Um, and the way we're going to do all that is we're actually going to have two rooms. So there will be, and I, 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 was, I was always hesitant to do this because you don't want to have a situation where speakers are speaking at the same time in two different places and somebody is like, well, sorry, physics says I can only be in one place at one time, so i got to miss somebody's uh, presentation. But there's just no way. We have, we have so many great speakers and so many people um, who want to come and, and break new ground, break into new ideas, break into new areas. Uh, and, and there's so many of them that the, the only way to do it is, is to go ahead and have two rooms and allow people to, to fluidly pass between the rooms. And one of the things I'm going to try to do is get, is schedule speakers to be on very different topics. So that, you know, if you're a big Bitcoin fan, you're not going to have Roger Veer in one room and Tone Vase in another room at the same time and be like, wait, I don't get to hear them both? <laughs> right? Yeah, you should put like the hippies in one room, like uh, Zen Gardner and Max Egan and all that, all the conscious revolution stuff, which I love, by the way. I'm not making fun of them. And then, yeah, with the other room, maybe more like technical Bitcoin, cryptocurrency right. or something like that. Because, uh, you know, those, not everyone's interested in both of them, for right. sure. Yeah. And, and I, I think we're going to get some some good breathing space in between those. Um, there'll be you know leadership conversations that are opposite. Uh, let's say our entrepreneurship op uh, conversations that are opposite. Let's say parenting conversations, right? Because there are some of us that do those two things at the same time, but usually we have a handle on one or the other, and it's the it's only one that we want to explore at any given time. Yeah. Uh, so hopefully that's going to work out. I'm sure I'm going to get some complaints. They're always inevitable, but uh, it's the best way for us to really accommodate the audience we have and the, and the speaker lineup that we have. Yeah, we should talk a little bit about the, the new speakers we have this year. We have almost all of the great speakers from last year returning. They uh, almost, I don't want to say beg, but they were like, well, we want to come back. We're, we're coming back. <laughs> so we're well, like, I, awesome. I did I, Before the end of last year, I just went to each of them and said, can I list you as coming back next year? Are you, are you willing to be on the, on the speaker list next year? And every person that I asked that question of said, yeah, absolutely, I'm coming back. Actually, we have those clips of you asking them. And so we'll get Pete Gorman, our uh, crack uh, video guy. It doesn't mean he smokes crack, means he's really good at video. <laughs> I don't know if he smokes crack or not, actually. Don't really care. Uh, but let's play that video now. <laughs> well, I've been invited back. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely coming. If I'm invited, I'm coming. But even if I wasn't, yeah, I would come back for sure. It's been really great. And the people have been uh, fantastic. It's It's been a... In a venue like this, really awesome. Highly recommend it. 
I wish we were already at next year so I could come back. It was so much fun. Well, this is my first time at Anarchapulco, and I am now going to be back every single year. And I'm, I'm so tempted to move here. I will definitely be back next year. I was invited back as a speaker for 2017, and it's an honor to come back and speak. And I can't wait to see. I can't even imagine how they're going to top this year. I can't. It's going to be mind-blowing. So, yeah, as you can see, they were excited about it. And we have so many other... Uh great news speakers this year. And I don't have the list in front of me. There's so many. I know right off the top of my head is Lauren Southern of Rebel Media. She's got a massive following. I just spent a number of days, including in my hotel room, don't want to start any rumors, uh, but nothing happened anyway. But uh, at Bilderberg in uh, Dresden, Germany, uh, we, we were the last people to kind of stay in there after lockdown again this year. And um, she really impressed me. She is going to be a force in the media world, in my opinion. She reminds me of not like she's exactly like these people, but like those sort of like really amazing, like I, I don't even want to use this word because I don't want to insult her, like Ann Coulter or something. Like just, you know, she's on her game, right? Like Ann Coulter's good at what she does, right? Lauren Southern's like the anarchist and definitely libertarian. She's, you know, she's, she says she's an anarchist, uh, which is good. And every time I talk to her, she says she is. Uh, I don't think she understands all the philosophy and everything. I don't think she really cares. She's really passionate about fighting this SJW movement is what she is just, and just passionate about it. And uh, just an amazing person. So she's gonna be there. And she's uh, worked in the past with Milo Yiannopoulos, who's coming back. Uh, and then we've so got- She and Milo will be like our thin blue, our thin blonde line. <laughs> yeah. We should get some red paint uh, just for uh, when they have their speech and cover ourselves in it and <laughs> try to disrupt their speech. And uh, uh, so many great new speakers coming. I don't remember any off the top of my head, but I know there's so many. Oh, well, we got uh, what, Eric July. Oh, yeah, that's right? going to be great. That, we've always had great rappers and musicians come at uh, Anarchapoco, and the first one was Rob Hustle. Uh, he did uh, Call the Cops, and he actually released his new track, um, Good Cops, at Anarchapoco. That was really cool. And then the last year we had Elias Clay, who's just an amazing artist, and numerous other people uh, performing. Uh, and uh, this year we got, these guys have been killing it. It's uh, Eric July and Backwards with their track Statism, which is the outward full and cap rap. Oh, it's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Emotional cast, voting on wet quotables. It's supposed to be a polling move. You vote for who is owning you. Y'all must be too dumb or blind to see it get robbed by some guys. There's heathens, your mind's defeated. You high because you think this guy's a genius. You let him tax you for breathing minus the breathing. You're a jack wagon, so beat it. And that's going to be a full show. The whole band's coming down, so that's going to be good. Uh, we're working on some other big acts as well, actually. Uh, then who's, we got some other really big new speakers. I'm just trying to think. Uh, that guy T? That guy T is going to be great. He's got a huge following. If you haven't seen the Anarchast with him, check it out. If you haven't seen his channel, check it out. He's got a way of talking. He's going to be also, if he's not already, he's going to be a massive YouTube star, full ANCAP. Uh, so many other great names, I just can't even Jeff think Tucker. of Jeff Tucker. Oh, Jeffrey Tucker, yeah. I, I didn't think of him as like being new because he was supposed to be here last year, right. but he, he ditched out on us. So I made him promise this year that he's coming for sure, so that's going to be great. So, and so many others. We're adding some every day. Um, it's just going to be uh, just an exciting, awesome event. Well, I think it was just two days ago that you asked me to put um, Derek J. Freeman on. Yeah, Derek J. I have, to, I have to put a note that says no relation. <laughs> Well, actually, the reason, the reason I got Derek J was uh, I invited Virgil Vaduva of Cell 411, which is an amazing app. Uh, that's blowing up. That's going to be a huge company. And I saw when uh, Virgil put on his Facebook, he said, I've just been invited to speak in Narcopoco, and Derek J Freeman was all excited. And I was like, yeah, I forgot about Derek. I interviewed him a long time ago with his amazing Derek J's cr Crime Spree. If you haven't seen that documentary, check it out. Really awesome. And he was thrilled to come speak. Uh, so he'll be coming down. So many others. And we're adding some big, uh, about big, big names still to add. Uh, putting in a proposal on one costs a lot of money to get him here. We'll see if we get him. Uh, but uh, uh, yeah, it's going to be great. Uh, yes. Four days. And so, Some guy that used to wave a gavel. 
Yeah, we don't want to say too much because it's it's quite likely he won't agree. But <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm not paying the price he asked because it's astronomical. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we'll see if we get him. Um, and a number of others I'm, I'm working on. I'm really hoping to get Mark Passio, and uh, I just can't get a hold of him. Everyone says, because uh, I, I know all of his friends, uh, John Vibes, past Anarchast guest, Derek Bros, who's also coming to speak, past Anarchast guest. And I keep saying to them, how do I get a hold of Mark? He's like almost impossible to get a hold of. And every time I talk to someone who knows him, they go, yeah, he's really excited. He wants to do it. You just got to connect. And I can't get a hold of him. So hopefully we'll have him. That'd be awesome. Maybe um, he'll watch this video and be like, maybe. Oh, shit. I, well, I, I know, haven't talked to Jeff yet. What, what's wrong? Where is he? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, he's, he kind of lives that way. He's very sort of, when he's not doing his thing, he, he's just off the map. So uh, people like that. So we're trying to work on people like that. Still, we got like eight months. How long till the next one? Eight months? Uh, yeah. To go? Yeah. It's, so we got a lot of months, We're yeah. going to add so much. It's going to be crazy. Uh, we might need three rooms by the end of it. And actually, it's looking like the crowd might be really huge this year. We just launched and within minutes the registrations already started it's like it's uh, Lollapalooza or something yeah I, I was <laughs> very happy to see how quickly once we launched uh, ticket sales started and people taking advantage of, of some of the new specials you know we had the student rate uh, which was the very the very first ticket sold was actually a student ticket which I thought was pretty cool uh, and people are latching on to the uh, the couples offering as well so you can get an extra $50 off a second ticket uh, if you buy two at the same time and you know the definition of couple is loose. I mean, obviously it's sort of intended for for married or involved couples. But you know, if you're business partners or just best friends or just two strangers that randomly hooked up on Facebook and said, "Hey, I want to save twenty five bucks a piece," you know, go or for on it. Tinder. No problem. Maybe they met on Tinder. Yeah, maybe they had Tinder friends. <laughs> so it'd be Luke Radowski with Dan Dix. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> well, no, I'd like I'd like, like for example I'd like Dan to hopefully bring Molly. Yeah, he hasn't brought her before, has he? No, he brought her. Oh, he did he, the first yeah, year. Yeah, in 2015. He didn't bring yeah. her last year. He came with his brother last year. Anyway, uh, yeah, so it's going to be awesome. Then we got all sorts of amazing sort of workshops that we're working on. Last year we did the ayahuasca, which everyone said we were crazy to do. Uh, and it turned out to be one of the things that uh, was the most talked about, that people loved about yeah, the event. It was, um, it was huge. The, the biggest thing about it was everybody wanted to get in when it was far too late. So we had a maximum of 50 attendees. There was like, uh, what do you call those guys outside, like reselling tickets? Uh, scalpers. So there was scalpers outside. Like, <laughs> so I who's got ayahuasca? Got ayahuasca. Yeah. And it's, I want it. It's like, oh, they're, people are fighting over it. Because well, we wanted to limit it. Because you can't have like hundreds of people tripping out right. at the top the, of the it, Grand it, Hotel. The, the logistics demanded that we could only have a maximum of 50 people. And the 50 sold out and people were trying to get in after that. And uh, the night that it actually happened, there were three or four people that were waiting in the lobby with, with all the other attendees. And, and they, were, they literally come up with like pillows and mats and everything saying, I'm not signed up, but I'm just hoping there's no shows <laughs> <laughs> so, I can get, so I can buy in. Uh, and, and that actually happened. Uh, you know, there were, there were a few There's always no some shows. people checking out. And, you know, like, we laugh about this. It isn't something to take lightly. You, you should know what you're doing if you're going to do this stuff. It's not... It's an it's intense experience. Uh, it's not... So uh, some people did chicken out, and good for them. If they weren't ready for it, they shouldn't do it. And, yeah. and so that's what happened with that. But this year, it's going to be interesting because Barry Cooper of the Never Get Busted crew has gotten so into this stuff now, including Iboga, which he's... If you watch his channel or his Facebook, he's talking about it all the time. It's, he considers it his new sort of passion in life mm -hmm. is to get all the people who are addicted to hardcore drugs like crack cocaine and oxycontin and all the pharmaceuticals uh, that are highly addictive i have a whole story about that with my mom actually but um it gets you off at this aboga so barry's so you know barry's so passionate right so he's like i'm gonna do a whole he week. is a creature of passion oh man he's just so full of passion he says he's coming here for a whole month he's gonna do the whole ayahuasca and all this sort of amazing experience for a week what's he calling it I, I, uh, it's the um ayahuasca ayahuasca poco ayahuasca <laughs> poco uh, altered police states with <laughs> barry cooper yeah. never boring around here uh, so yeah, that's going to be really cool. Uh, we'll see. We, a lot of these things, by the way, are still being worked on. So um, you know, we don't have exact details. We haven't even started selling those workshops yet because right. they're still being worked out. But that's in the process. Uh, yeah, the, the the speculative plan right now is to do five days after the conference, and um, 
the first night or two would be ayahuasca ceremonies and then the participants would continue to stay around and and converse and be involved with uh, both Barry's crew and the other participants and really absorb their their overall experience and not, it's not just you know go and do it and then leave and go figure out what it means on your own it's it's come and, and converse with people of like minds and who had like experiences and explore the real meaning of those experiences together so uh, he's which is the way it should be really uh, I've done ayahuasca a few times and once I did it in a house in Monterey Mexico and when I was done, I just walked over everyone's body, walked out onto the street at four in the morning and walked around on the street for hours, uh, which was interesting on, on its own. But the next one I did was in Mexico City by a lake. And uh, afterwards, I spent a few hours with the shaman and we discussed my experience. And that was really helpful because you go through this, it's, you, you can't explain what you go through, but it's very hard to comprehend to even just grasp what you just went through. So it is helpful to spend a bit of time with people afterwards trying to figure out what just happened. <laughs> Now, that's, that's for the whole Psychonaut crowd, <laughs> whom I am big fans of, by the way. But at the same time, we're also planning, uh, during that time after the conference, uh, a Freedom Family Camp. Um, and Dana Martin's been working with me on this. Uh, and basically what we want to do there is have a series of events that are centered around understanding anarchy, peaceful parenting, unschooling, as these concepts all relate to each other. Uh, here in Acapulco for another, we haven't decided whether it's going to be three or five days, but for more days following the conference. Uh, and we're going to have events like, uh, we'll, we'll do water parks and scuba diving and uh, we'll go see uh, turtle releases for, for uh, when the turtles get born and they, they crawl back out across the beach to the sea. Uh, we'll do historic tours of Acapulco, just all kinds of learning opportunities for kids. That'll be in the afternoons. In the mornings, we'll actually have more formal like lectures and presentations regarding all of these concepts. So regarding alternative education concepts, peaceful parenting concepts, parenting practices con concepts. So it'll be sort of adult-centric, parenting-centric in the morning, and then family-centric in the afternoon going into the evening. Now, one of the ideas that Dana has is she wants to do like a vegan Iron Chef competition. <laughs> so that sounds like it's going to be kind of fun. I have a friend who's coming who's a uh, semi-professional uh, magician. So he's going to do a magic workshop for kids. Um, yeah, we might even, uh, another, another thing that's going to be going on through the whole conference is that Carrie Wedler, uh, who was a speaker last year, uh, it wants to, she's a yoga instructor in her sort of normal day job. And she wants to come and do yoga classes and a yoga, run a yoga studio for the entire conference. And uh, so she's put that offer forth and I've latched onto it because I'm really excited about that idea. I think a, a lot about that sort of personal exploration and meditation can do a lot for you in discovering freedom. So we want to offer that across the conference and so that will also be a part of the family camp. We're going to do yoga for kids, right? That's cool. And we may even do yoga for Psychonauts, right? <laughs> like you just did ayahuasca and you're trying to process everything and now you can and learn how to, to center and meditate and adjust your body and live in your body and, and really absorb that experience. Uh, that's all a possibility. We don't know how everything's going to play out yet, but those are the kind of ideas that we're talking about right now. Yeah, it's great. And even while we're talking, our, our kids, you have two kids and I have two, ones in Germany right now, but the other one, my daughter is out with your kids at uh, the pool here. Um, yeah. and. Uh, talk about the peaceful parenting thing, and for people who don't know a lot about this, it's it's really awesome. I posted this on Facebook today, and it got like a ton of likes. Uh, it was a conversation between my daughter and me, and so I said to my daughter this morning, I said, uh, tonight I'm going to go see Nathan and his kids, and you're coming. And I said it that way because I was like assuming she wanted, she was going to want to come once I told her what was what we were going to do, but she took it like this. So I said, and you're coming, and she goes. No, you don't tell me what to do. <laughs> and, and I went, you're, you're right, of course, you own yourself. Uh, but uh, what I wanted to mention was he has a water slide at his house. And she's like, what time should I be ready? <laughs> That's peaceful parenting. It's, it's, you know, it's all like that. So uh, Dana Martin, of course, is, per I don't know anyone who's a bigger uh, name in peaceful parenting. And she's going to be back for a third year doing that. So if you do have kids, even if you don't, actually, there's so many anarchists out there who 
once they hear about peaceful parenting, they actually start having babies. I think that happened with uh, Julie Taransky. Uh, <laughs> she was here and hearing all about this peaceful parenting, and then she couldn't come this year because she had a baby. Uh, so a lot of anarchists are like, I can't wait to have a baby to try out all this stuff because uh, it actually is really cool, and you've been doing it as well. You know, yeah, it's it's. I mean, it's been a huge success for us, um, and that is one of the things about the family camp that we want to offer is is that it's you know if you don't have kids and you still want to come. Yeah, that's, I think that's great, you know, if you, if you just want to get to know the kids um, and, and see what it's like to be around parents who are uh, peacefully interacting with their kids and, and enacting volunteerism in their own homes, uh, then come on and, and come experience that, you know, just, you know, buy the ticket, be a part of the workshop. I think we're going to have a pretty good population of people that just want to see what happens uh, mm -hmm. when they're around that. So th there will be families and then there will be people who want to observe the families. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to that because, to be honest with you, um, one of my favorite things to do at an Acapulco is to show off my kids because they come in and they just like explode into the room and everybody's like, oh my God, that's so, much, that's so much fun. Yeah, same with my kids. Yeah, um, you know, there's free spirits. We haven't beaten the freedom out of them. Uh, and it's amazing to see how they progress and how they develop when they are allowed to do that. It's, it's night and day. I meet kids from public schools. <laughs> They're like, uh, I just want to... Oh, they're always sleepy. <laughs> right? They have to get up before dawn and, oh. and they're driven off on a, on a bus and abused all day and packed into tiny little desks they're and just looking ordered for around all day. Some glue to sniff or something at that point. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's terrible. So yeah, check that out. Um, we should just maybe briefly just mention about Mexico and Acapulco. Uh, some people... Well, there was... Oh, hang on. Uh, there, there, were, there were a couple of more things I wanted to drop. Oh, sure. Um, <laughs> and I can't you're a good promoter, I like that. I can't believe you forgot to mention that before the day before the conference, there is once again the Dollar Vigilante Internationalization and Investment Summit. Yeah, um, this year was a really great turnout of people, a lot of D uh, Dollar Vigilante subscribers from around the world, and pretty much all the investments talked about at that conference, and that was February, it's now July, have gone up 100, 100, 200 percent. Uh, so, uh, you know, we've been so ahead of the curve, and Dollar Vigilante, just so you know, has grown massively. It's getting crazy, actually. I, it, I, that's why I say this might be massive this year, because even just Dollar Vigilante people, people don't even know about the Anarchist side or anything. Could be 500 plus, and last year was only 150, so it could be 1,000. I don't know, it's, it's growing that big. So, so that's gonna be great. If you're interested in investment, Bitcoin, gold, uh, precious metals, internationalizing your assets, check that out. I'll be talking about that a lot more at the Dollar Vigilante if you uh, follow that YouTube channel. In internationalizing yourself, right? I mean, that was Paul Seymour's presentation last year. Uh, which just went over the moon with this. I mean, the, the audience was just thrilled to have somebody up there talking about, you know, what is it like to live in every country in Latin America? And he could relay it all. He'd been through all of them, so. Yeah, and as we know, it's, it's really tough. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's scary, it's terrifying. Like it's, my, uh, <laughs> like we just, we're constantly ducking bullets whizzing by our head. Yeah, we're gonna be beheaded probably soon after this video, so please remember both of us. Yeah. Um, and actually, my driver's coming back right now with my maid uh, to with the kids who are at the pool uh, fairly soon, and then we have to somehow get home without getting shot. So, <laughs> yeah. But no, really, like that's a th it's so funny what people think about places like Mexico and that. Like Mexico, where Acapulco is one of what they say is one of the most dangerous cities in Mexico. Um, what's your thoughts on that? Uh, <laughs> I've been here for over a year. Uh, the closest thing that I've ever felt to a threat of violence um, have been the, the two times I got pulled over by Mexican police. Um, and the, the first time, since it had never happened to me before, I felt like I was, I, I, was, I was still thinking of the mentality of dealing with an American cop. So I was scared beyond all imagination. And I'm like shaking and I'm, I'm trying, yes sir, yes sir, come up with all the paperwork, but I don't speak the language. And but I do know in the back of my head that ultimately he's just looking for a bribe. And so I'm trying to figure out how to get to the point where I'm like, here, take my money. Um, and not much, by the way, like $5 or $10. Yeah, except <laughs> I, didn't know, I didn't know that. Oh. Right? So at the time, I'm like, I have 500 pesos, which was, you know, 30, 30 bucks, bucks at the time. Yeah. Uh, and the guy's like, wow. well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm off work for the day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then I tried to hand it to him out the window. He was like, no, no, not this side. Because we were on the, on, right on the Costera. 
And he's like, no, no, not where anyone can see. I have to go to the other side of, the, of your van and you hand it to me there. Um, so, so we did that and that was kind of scary. And then the next time I got stopped by some federales, um, I just got out and, and was like, no espanol. And they kept saying things to me and they were asking, it's something about documentation, but I had no idea what documentation they were asking for. And I just kept going, I don't know what you're saying. And I stuck to English the whole time. I'm like, I have no idea what you're saying. Can you speak English? And they're like, you know, speak Spanish? I said, no. And we just went back and forth. I, I, I wandered around the car going, is there something wrong with my car that you're trying to tell me about? And, and they said, uh, someone else speaks Spanish? And they pointed at the car. And so my wife rolled down the window. And she, and she stuck her head out. And she's like, nope. Nobody else speaks Spanish. <laughs> Guess we're done here. Yeah, and they, that's exactly what happened. Is they, like eventually they were like, I, I, eventually I said, can I go? And they went, you go, you go. And they got back in their car and they drove away. It was. Well, it we was, know there's actually so many people have moved down here, even since last conference. I don't even know how many people. I, I just saw another guy today and I didn't even know who he is, but he lives here now. And every week there's at least one or two. Uh, moving down and uh, we've heard so many stories because some of them really don't like the cops which is totally understandable and they just uh, like one uh, I think it was David or one of them uh, he just they, they, they put on their sirens and he just kept driving and so he got to a Home Depot parking lot uh, one of the kinds where you have to like get a ticket to go in and you have to pay to park and he drove in and the cops were like oh we're not gonna pay <laughs> a dollar to get to that parking lot so they we just drove off yeah we'd have to go in and pretend to buy something and get our parking validated that's not worth it they just drive away <laughs> so yeah it's not that dangerous but at this all. but this stuff hasn't like none of this kind of thing has happened for for months now it's pretty rare yeah like, it's I definitely mean, it's, not well it's tapered off a lot like mm -hmm. they've made changes in the in the way the the police force gets paid and well the they're not thing supposed was, to hassle people now and, and they're not they, supposed they, to well they're not supposed to but they've by and large, they've stopped. Well, there experience. was an entire year where they went on strike, and then the government said, you know what, we're just going to fire everybody. And there was no police. There was no tra traffic police, uh, transit police, uh, here in Acapulco for like a year. And it was great. The traffic was so much better because, uh, you know, people would just go through. If they're sitting at a red light and there's no cars, they would just go, and everyone would just do that. And it's like, oh, this works so much better. And then somehow they got a new governor here and he's like, oh, maybe we should give them some jobs. <laughs> and so now we're back to every now and then they'll pull someone over. But I think, I think since then that same governor then gave everybody raises with the condition of <laughs> you can't, you, yeah, you can't stop extorting tourists. I, I'll give you new cars, I'll give you new uniforms, I'll give you a raise, but you have to leave the tourists alone so that they'll simply feel safe rather than, than extorted from. And they, got, they built that new police force, the, the Polizia Turista. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, but they are mostly female, right? They're well, like, they even had the female ones for a while, didn't they? Were well, they, they were all female for a while, and then they started having male versions. But, but they, all, they wear light blue instead of black, and, and they wear, like, khaki shorts, and, and everything they, they have says, you know, assistance on it, and they're supposed to be here to help you. And some of them are really cute. Yeah, so yeah. some of them. It's, it's, it's definitely my kind of police state. Yeah, so that's, <laughs> you're saying, the worst thing you've seen is some of those cops. Yeah, yeah it's, it's exactly. pretty bad. Uh, so uh, don't listen to the news, it's crazy. I, you know, what they say about Mexico is unbelievable and it's actually sad and actually I'm trying to fight it. I, I did a video, if you want to check it out, on my own channel. Just went around Acapulco and we interviewed people. Just said, is it dangerous here? And everyone was like, no, not at all. Uh, if you want to check it out, we'll have a link to it down below. But <clears throat> now it's, it's so much more dangerous than the US, in my opinion. I get kidnapped every time. And I'm actually going up there in a week to Freedom Fest. Uh, so wish me luck. Uh, yeah. It's, you know, Good luck dangerous. celebrating your freedom at Freedom Fest. Yeah. <laughs> At least it's in Vegas, so you can still smoke indoors, and you can still drink after two in the morning and stuff like that. But yeah, it's nothing like here. So uh, land of the free down here, definitely. So cool. Anything else you want to wrap up with? The sun's going down. Our kids are probably almost done. Yeah, my phone just rang a minute ago. So uh, that's probably my daughter. She knows your number now. <laughs> 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 yeah, I think we got this beautiful sunset, and um, it's time to enjoy it and relax with a uh, little more tequila. And uh, this is how we do it down here in, in Acapulco. And if you uh, think you want to be a part of it, then get down here in February for an Acapulco and we'll see you then. Yeah, check it out at narcopulco.com. If you like this video, like, subscribe, share it down below. And yeah, let's go, uh, go for some dinner, or have some drinks or something with yeah. the family uh, in dangerous Acapulco. <laughs> so that's it for Anarchast, your home for anarchy on the internet. Peace, love, and anarchy.
happens when you call the cops. Say what? This is what happens when you call the cops. Come on. This is what happens when you call the cops. If you get your rights violated or you all get shot. Pow. This is what happens when you call the cops. Uh. This is what happens when you call the cops. What? This is what happens when you call the cops. You get your rights violated or you all get shot. I'm Bang. sick of people being victimized by criminal cops. Psychopathic predators terrorizing neighborhood blocks. Equipped with pepper spray, mace, cuffs, tasers, and glocks. They like serial killers acting out subliminal thoughts. Forget what you taught. Yeah. A divine comedy, but this is no joke They'll likely try to sign me on Interscope Dope, but that's not why I'm rhyming This is my soul's goal Third eye shining with the indigo glow Most of the time my feelings don't show Trying to figure out how to fix myself And how to heal the whole globe Listen, the whole world is a stage hey, Mexico. This is Anarchist.